Striking Hollywood writers have rejected the latest proposal from production studios. Studios made the summary of their latest offer public in a move that the WGA is describing as an attempt to try and get members to turn on one another. The studio's proposal promises a guaranteed minimum of two writers per production, a guaranteed minimum of 10 weeks of work for development room writers, certain AI-related protections, and a training structure for writers to become future showrunners. That proposal was the first counter offer presented to the union since the strike began more than 100 days ago. The Guild says the proposal, quote, failed to sufficiently protect writers from the existential threats that caused us to strike in the first place. The WGA also represents writers here at CBS News, but they are under a different contract and are not on strike. Elaine Lowe joins us now. She's a staff writer for The Ankler. Uh, so, Elaine, we've listed some of what was in that counter proposal from the studios. Talk to us about why the union rejected it. Was there any hope that it was actually going to gain traction? What, what really was the sticking point? So for context, going into this week, the mood was pretty hopeful. The studios and the writers had met about four or five times over the last couple of weeks. Uh, for the first time in the 100 plus days that the writers have been on strike since May. So it seemed like there was really progress going. And when the studios released their full suite of proposals Tuesday night, uh, that came as a surprise to uh, many of the writers because both sides had promised to be on media blackout. And aside from the proposals themselves, that move was seen as a tactic to try and circumvent uh, the writers and try and to divide them. As for the proposals themselves, as uh, WGA leadership put it themselves, it was, quote, not nothing, yet not nearly enough. And they believe it doesn't go far enough in order to help codify some of the protections that they're looking for in order to preserve the writer's room and to preserve the profession as they see it now. So what about making that latest offer public? Is that creating a rift among union members? Actually, if the intention was to create a rift, it backfired and the writers have been, it seems, more unified than ever. There was a very strong outcry over that tactic Tuesday night, although a source close to the studios that I spoke to said that uh, the uh, intent for the AMPTP, which represents the major studios like Netflix and Disney and Warner Brothers, for them to release it was actually to show everyone that they had been trying to make progress, that they had been trying to work more toward the middle uh, from their initial position in May. Uh, but again, the writers uh, did not take to that well and see, see it as a, an attempt at a divisive tactic. Well, the WGA says this is the first counteroffer it's received from the studios. Does this open the pathway for both sides to continue working together at the bargaining table? And I think the other question that everybody wants to know is, what does this mean in terms of when our favorite shows might be able to return? Are we still looking at a, at a complete like unknown mm -hmm. on that point? Well, when it comes to the consumer, uh, from what I understand, a lot of folks have been saying, if this thing goes past mid-September, if this goes into the fall, then it really causes massive delays. When you're talking about uh, getting writer's rooms in gear, when you're talking about production schedules, when you're looking at the 2024 box office schedule or TV schedules and things wind up getting bottlenecked and having to be pushed. And I was just talking to an actor yesterday who said essentially when it comes to uh, auditions and booking things, her entire year is shot. And that's not an uncommon sentiment that you'll hear among folks on the studio side as well when it comes to planning, uh, because we're already, we may only be in August uh, and only two thirds of the way through the year, but essentially this town kind of goes dark after Thanksgiving. Uh, so you're looking at a very limited amount of time for when there's a contract and for that to be ratified by membership and to get the whole Hollywood machine back in action again. All right, Elaine Lowe, Elaine, thank you.